and a very good day to you and welcome again to the program. We are standing in the forest on a beautiful summer's morning. And if you listen carefully, you might even hear the birds singing. They are so happy today and so am I. <laughs> Why? Because I have a future and his name is Jesus Christ. And one of these fine days I'm going home. That's right. I'm not here forever. I'm going home to glory to be with him. I want to share one scripture verse with you from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and verse 24. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much grain. You see, if you take a grain of wheat in a sack and you put it in a cold room, you can leave it there for 20 years and nothing will happen. It'll just remain a grain of wheat. But when you put it in nice moist soil, the grain of wheat dies and out of it springs new life. So I want to say to you that we need to die in order to live. You say, what does that sound like? It's some kind of paradox. No. When we die to self, then Christ lives in us. As long as we are full of ourselves, he can't get in. And that's what I'm seeing. Too many people so concerned about themselves. If we look at the Passion Translation, the same verse, John 12, 24, it's very interesting what the writer has written. He says this, Let me make this clear. <laughs> A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops into the ground and dies because then it sprouts and produces a great harvest of wheat all because one grain died. Now I want to tell you, I think it was around about 2008, we had a Mighty Men conference on this very farm just over there. And I remember an old man, a dear old man, his name was William O'Brien. In fact, his ashes have been deposited on this farm. And there is a stone there to commemorate his death on this farm. He arrived there with his little pickup. He was earlier than anybody else. He parked it in a nice position. He got his deck chair out. He sat in his deck chair and he looked over all our crops of maize. And I understand he was very happy and content because there were men that were camping around him. He looked so happy. And I went to sleep that night. Well, <laughs> I didn't really go to sleep. I don't sleep much with those mighty men conferences because I'm hearing vehicles coming in, motorbikes, trucks, buses, cars, and I'm wondering whether the guys are going to have a place to camp. But at the middle of the night, there was a knock on the door. And one of my sons came to me and said, Dad, we've got a problem. There's an old gentleman in the campsite who has just died. I said, what? You know, I was devastated. I thought that's all we need at this time. The first night of the event. He's just died. So immediately, I thought that's going to be the end of the event. But you know something? Quite the opposite happened. Because of the death of that gentleman, and he went to be with Jesus. And by the way, when I spoke to his wife, I contacted her personally, obviously. And I told her, she said to me some days later, she said, Angus, there's nowhere else he would have rather have gone home to heaven in no other place than in amongst all his brothers at a mighty men conference. But the death of that man woke up the men. And there was no fooling around. There was no horsing around. Men were weeping at every meeting. Men were repenting and giving their lives to the Lord because they realized how short this life is. Don't waste time. Goodbye.